Thank you so much for joining us for the episode number 16 of SRE Practitioner Series with Suresh GP. I'm your host, Suresh GP, and today we have an esteemed guest who is joining us all the way from Germany. So um, we have um, Praveen Kasan, who is the expert in site elapsed engineering and works in Diconium Digital Solutions. His chief responsibilities includes being a technology leader in the SRE organization uh, in Diconium, as well as being part of the leadership team. He is responsible for best practices, standardization of technology, and acting as a technology scout. He is responsible for consulting the organizations and helping them in their SRE transformation. Thank you so much, Praveen, for joining us. And how are you doing today? Thank, thank you, Suresh, for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. I'm an ardent follower of you in, in the SRE Practitioner Series. I really like the way the, the work that you're doing to the community. And, uh, uh, and I'm really doing good. So excited to be dwell into the discussion that we are going to have. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, I think today's topic, uh, Praveen, I think every top, every episode that we do, we have a very specific focus on a theme and based on our mm -hmm. earlier interactions and the work that you've done, I wanted to pick up this role called an SRE coach. Sometimes it's a very glorified role. Everybody wants to be yeah. called as an SRE coach. Um, and you have been doing a lot of transformation. Yeah. So why don't you give um, our viewers um, uh, your first, mm -hmm. uh, a little brief of your journey towards SRE because that itself will get people excited about yeah. what made you go towards an SRE journey. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I think it's like a typical uh, usual journey, right? I born and brought up in India and uh, did my computer science graduation, and I joined uh, as any other IT company. And I was, uh, we, I was a pure developer, and I was working as a software developer. And then I had this opportunity to come to Germany to work for Deconium Digital Solutions, and they were building a huge e-commerce platform for automobile companies. And then it was really fascinating. And then I joined there. Uh, the scale of the projects that I used to run or, uh, or I used to develop was a little bit smaller than the scale of the projects that we were run, running here. And I was always amazed. Uh, I always wondered how the things work in the production. And I was I never had the opportunity because we had a classic dev and ops split up and I, sure. I, don't, I, don't, I never had the opportunity. So I moved into ops engineer role because that's where you get, gather more insights about the system and 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 then it's a, like, the, uh, to be honest, I was having it, uh, I was looking down on the operation engineers before going there, but after going there, I really see the pains that they are going through and so sure. on. Uh, later, like the, the the scale of the projects that we were working are growing enormously, and then we realized quickly that the classic dev and ops model and then uh, is not working out really well, and the the whole movement towards the microservice architecture made it even difficult because in the classic monolith applications it was easy to find one developer who knows answer to, who are uh, who have answers to all the questions, but with the microservice architecture it was really challenging. Then we saw that okay we need to think like a developer we need to be uh, focused on engineering and we need to do a little bit more. So that was my first transition into the uh, topic of uh, engineering focus operations role. At that time I was not introduced to the SRE, but when the scale of the challenges that we are having was growing and then we, we really needed to look into the it was out of compulsion that we had to find a solution and then i was introduced uh, with the sre literature in the internet and then i saw the need uh, of doing that in our organization and uh, after a quite a lot of um, effort that we try to trans transform our ops team into a sre team and then slowly we are pioneering the idea of sre so Excellent. That so one of, the, one of the things that I think is fascinating, Praveen, is that a lot of times people uh, pick up a particular course and then say, okay, let's do SRE. <laughs> but in your case, there is a real need that actually emerged. And because of which what happens is all that you study, you'll have to be put into action because if it's not delivering results, then you'll have to kick this out and then start doing something else, right? So, yeah. which, which I think is a very important part for viewers who are watching because a lot of time um, also uh, and i and you would have you would probably relate this better uh, praveen that many people think that sre is what uh, google said but not every company is google so how did you first feel when you started to look at sre will this be even applicable in your context of uh, organization was there any kind of challenges that you saw applying 
Okay, so like uh, to answer your first part of the question is about the Google Google book, right? So that's also a fascinating thing that Google said in the book is like, it's a pragmatic approach. You have to see what it works for you. That was really, if you look at the latest trends in the industry, like it always like, oh, this is the thing and it's a solution for every problem that you may have. So SRE is a very pragmatic approach. Regarding the challenges in the uh, implementation, when I read the book, I found it like, it makes sense. It, we need to do that. And then, uh, and then later, when I start conversing people with the people, it was really challenging to get the buy-in of the whole organization sure. because there are a lot of resistance towards a change, and there is a lot of mindset involved, and uh, and and a lot of skepticism in in and around. Um, honestly, I thought educating about SRE is the challenging problem, but the challenging was to get the buy-in and uh, and create an awareness about SRE and also uh, get a desire. So implementation is was a cakewalk when we get into the sure. awareness and we, when we sorted out awareness and desire, sure. it was a cakewalk. So what was challenging for me was creating an awareness and what was challenging for me to create a desire in the organization that that is something that we need to look at. Uh, so that's where uh, I was playing an SRE coach role in a smaller area to uh, like, to educate and uh, to be the transformation leader. So sure. oftentimes in the industry, you know, right? So like the, there is one guy in the organization or three guys in the organization think that SRE is the right approach and they find it's a bottom-up approach, most, most of the cases, yeah. So, right. so uh, tell us about the role of an SRE coach in the context of an SRE transformation, because sometimes I think there are... Uh, uh, this term called coach has also been quite abused in yeah. many terms, right? I mean, yeah. uh, to, to, be, to be fair enough, there is a merit in the level of coach, but uh, tell us uh, why do we need a coach or what is your definition of an SRE coach in the SRE transformation? Yeah, so I will try to first address the why part of it. So you see, right, so SRE is a daunting, SRE transformation is a daunting task. So it needs, uh, it, it, it needs a lot of um, uh, communication, it needs a lot of uh, advertisement or marketing about SRE, and it needs concrete actions, right. and it also needs uh, the. It needs to be done. It needs to be done in a way that which suits to your organization, sure. because it's not a bible. Like you, you take it and implement it, but you have to do what works for you, and you have to do like check. So oftentimes in any in most of our organizations where I play that uh, the consultant role or uh, that uh, oftentimes in the organizations there is two or three SRE um, influencers or pioneers or uh, the, uh, the, the those are the things that they we, we call them we call them evangelists a lot of evangelists times, yeah they yeah. call of us evangelist being a glorified term for people yeah. to uh, become yeah. uh, propagations right? yeah yeah so they, they they start it up and they find it really difficult to get the ba management buy-in or they find it really difficult to get the dev team buying and or ops team buying and so on and so on uh, it was really challenging one thing and or it's all sometimes it's a top down driven some yeah. senior vice president think that okay we need to look at the sre and we need to do that uh, and it's it's again it's a challenge also reversed way right so sure. the uh, the vice president will not have enough time to transform and to get the uh, message across the whole organization and it's also a challenging so you need someone who has who knows uh, the site reliability engineering depth and width of the topic right and then has the patience you, you should be really patient because the transformation is a is like a movement, right? So it's right. not easy. It, you cannot achieve the results overnight. So right. someone who is patient, someone who has an experience and someone who can propagate the idea and someone who can ruthlessly prioritize or help you ruthlessly prioritize on getting the more buy-in from the organization and so on and so on. So to drive and steer and facilitate the SRE transformation, is is uh, is the role of an SRE coach or is the task of an SRE coach? So the skills needed for that, I kind of mentioned that the empathy and uh, communication and ability to sell and uh, ability to market and as well as ability to influence and motivate and um, get the buy-in and so show I, the results. Yeah, and I yeah. think one of the things which is stand out for me when you talked about skills is about uh, patience because that's one of the underrated. Uh, attribute for any of the success journey, right? Because yeah. um, I, I coordinate, uh, you know, I correlate this with a test cricket. You know, sometimes yeah. when you play test cricket, all that matters is that you're staying in the wicket for a yeah. long period of time and start. And after a particular time, you'll start scoring boundaries and stuff like that. So it's also important, as you rightly said, 
uh, for ha- people to have patience, but also uh, just on the earlier point that you talked about, when you are very clear with your why, how mm-hmm. it becomes a lot more easier, right? Again, yeah, the definition exactly. of a purpose and a desire of why we need to do SRE and how SRE is going to help us uh, create visible difference as well as mm-hmm. tangible results will mm-hmm. probably change the whole dimension to a greater extent, right? I, I, I yeah. On, on that point. Yeah, but we need to look at the uh, culture a little bit differently, right? So, because why for an operations team is different uh, uh, why for a dev team or why yeah. for a vice president is a different for a why to the business stakeholders, right? So, the, like, like uh, the, uh, the facilitator should be able to cater the needs of everyone's why to join hands and then be, make it as a successful SRE transformation, yeah. So, so in that case, does it also mean um, as an SRE coach, you should have played... Uh, roles of a developer, a tester, a QA or ops person to even understand the other person's view of why? Or is it okay that you have a a breadth of understanding, not the depth to really play a role of a coach? I mean, it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Yeah, exactly, right? So uh, you need to have, uh, that's that's a really good insightful question, right? So you don't need to do, you don't need to have the experience that you have done everything of it. Sure. But you should be in a position to speak on eye level to your stakeholders, right? So right. when yeah, then like the, the the very first step of an SRE coach uh, for a when when SRE coach takes the topic of SRE transformation in any organization, the first thing that he needs to do is study or research in the right. whole organization, conducting interviews to the POs, architects, and the devs and operations engineers, and as well as uh, presidents, vice presidents, and uh, and the management to see what are their pains with the existing setup and then do synthesize that information or like take the information process it and see how the sre can uh, help the help those challenges mitigating and and potentially uh, study the evaluation and try to start finding quick wins right. uh, for a transformation and then prepare a roadmap and uh, execute that to answer your question directly yes like you need you have you need to have certain amount of experience on the whole software development life cycle sure. as well as on the leadership aspects right so to be able to speak on eye level and this is uh, okay often an- another underrated skill that uh, i would mention is that ability to cater your message to the audience is something which is really underrated skill in the sure. industry. So sure. the one who can communicate or who can cater his communication to the uh, stakeholder can uh, uh, grow uh, bigger than uh, than the one who knows all the insights but not able to put the message across to the stakeholder. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. It's like music to my ears. I tell a lot of yeah. people as you start grow up in your, growing up in your career, what mm-hmm. matters is about your ability to articulate very clearly to your stakeholders, particularly with business. Because a lot of times when I talk to business owners, they say, you know what, there's a problem with IT. They talk about (laughs) jargons. It just goes over my head. I'm not able to relate with each other. Mm -hmm. So um, you're absolutely right that you need to be able to articulate based on the stakeholder at what level they are. You should probably tune your conversations that is more appropriate because in in a VP or a director level, conversation within 15 minutes if i'm not able to making an impact they're going to say thank you so much we have other work to do so you'll have to be very clear in terms of understanding your audience their level of uh, patience as well as their level of um, importance and then start to curate that conversation you're absolutely yeah exactly and also we need to see uh, what is there for him uh, what is there in it for them so that's something that we need to uh, cater to Absolutely. Yeah. So going back to on the SRE coaching part, is there any mm-hmm. specific instance that ke- comes into your mind, which actually created a significant difference in the transformation? Because I know, you know, it's been a in a journey like going on and on and on, but anything, something which is very significantly changed uh, for our viewers to just get a sense of how SRE coaching helped that transformation. Uh, well, uh, so again, I said, uh, again, I went into go into the details discussion that we were having it, right? So each organization have a different set of uh, different, set, different setup and different challenges. But the fundamental challenge is to bring everyone together. Right. So because of that, because of the culture, or because of the organizational silos that they have, and also because of the several aspects. So and oftentimes, SRE transformation is one man's or five man, five man driven decision. And, and like, it, like, so, there were, I, I was a point. I was working this consulting engagement with customer. I I cannot give you the names, but so I was working this consulting engagement. So they have hired SREs and three or four SREs in the in their organization, and they want to transform and one and then the. 
there is no uh, there is no uh, like there is no buy in or there is no uh, for these three SREs there is no space in the software development life cycle at all right. so right. ops team is siloed and then dev team is siloed and so on and so on so it was really ch- so then like uh, they saw that it is they those those uh, three SREs are not adding enough value or they are not using it and then and they asked us if they can if we can consult them so the the very moment that i joined in and i tried to do some engineer uh, the consultations or interviews with every other uh, aspects of uh, that comp- that uh, organization it was was evident that there is no one definition of site reliability engineering in the organization there are uh, the dev developer has his own dev definition and product owner has his own definition and everyone has it and no everybody thinks that sre should do this part or that part or this part or something like that so there is no one common language of what is sre is some of them think that over oh, they have to write cicd pipelines some of them that it's a cool title for ops engineer some some of them think that okay like ah uh, they it's a it's it's just another ma- marketing gimmick or something like that right so what did i do or what we what did we do is like we sat down and identify those things and then prepared four slider or five slider so what is sre what what are the existing challenges with the current setup and how sre can gonna solve right and how sre gonna uh, have a place in the whole is software development life cycle and what are their responsibilities and how that is one thing that is high level management which which we use it for the whole management there are detailed uh, pitch uh, decks for each for example product owner how an is having an sre is good for him because he can focus on velocity and then someone else care for the reliability and someone else focuses on reliability and they can go hand in hand and he can add more value to the business as long as uh, he, he can innovate more in, and and so on and add more value so that's that's an engagement that we did and um, after a week or something like that it was really uh, a successful uh, thing i would say of course we are still uh, having al- other challenges but it was like a uh, like a click right so like everybody started seeing that a value in sre and so on and so on. sometimes you need to th- look at the things in different perspective and need to see the root cause of a problem then uh, then at fixing the symptoms so that was one of the uh, okay. good example so excellent so in terms of um, uh, particularly what happens is um, if a, one of the biggest uh, uh, moments when you talk about sre is about slos and slis uh, it, yeah. it's it's a much much bigger dimension of conversation because what happens is a lot of times you don't own everything in the stack like for example you might own the infrastructure some part of application but i still have third party systems that needs to look at from an end to end value chain right so yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you how have you had experience as a coach towards looking at establishing uh, the service level objectives the sli and how it can he really work because for me if you crack that puzzle then the rest of things is much more easier but that's a difficult puzzle to even crack you know how 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 did you go about doing that so for uh, defining slis and slos like it's it's uh, it's all, like by reading the book it's an easy task okay let's identify what is an slo and then set it up but in reality it's really challenging as you said as you rightly ma- mentioned that there are a lot of dimensions to it so okay. one is infrastructure or, uh, or the tech side, tech and also the people side as people yeah. aspects of it and also and uh, and also the uh, process aspect of it right so and and so on and uh, the like the slo by defining and uh, having a dashboard uh, is as as good as uh, like as bad as not having slo if you don't if you don't take the decisions based on slo using error budget or if you don't right. translate that information and so on so usually what we what i used to, used to do is like i'll bring the stakeholders into the conversation like product owners operations and then developers and as well as the business in defining the critical uh, uh, indicators and we we should not over engineer it we should start something we should start with something smaller and right. with smaller slos and slis and like often times for a bigger bigger projects you will already have a non functional requirements so we have to correlate them with the, the with the slis and slos that you want to have defined and then define something and then um, evaluate and uh, take decisions on that and you see that your slo is too little or too mu- too much then you have to refine it and review it and then uh, change the decision matrix across it and so on and so on How, however one key learning that i had is that is like defining slo is not 
enough, but taking decisions based on SLO and getting everyone uh, behind the idea of SLOs and error budget is really important. So then, then only you will get the you will get you will you can take the actual results of uh, site reliability engineering. Yeah. Uh, great point. One quick question on that one was, <laughs> we talk about consequences, right? I mean, in, uh, yeah. if SLO gets breached, we will say, hey, guys, guys, time out. We'll do this. Uh, consequences. Does it really happen, uh, Praveen? In your opinion? Because considering that the product owner is always on a pressure to release features, they have a sprint velocity plan, they have a release planning meeting going on, there is already something committed to stakeholders. So how critically do you think people understand the value of error budgets and consequences? Is it is it something that really happens? Because that's been a very tough conversation I've had over my engagements across, but I wanted to get your perspective. So uh, honestly, if I have to say, so that's a really, uh, an, in, that happens in a matured uh, organization, right? Sure. So uh, in, a, in a most likely in a smaller organizations, right? So you will define SLOs, uh, but at least it will help you. Uh, like it may not, it may not give you the power or uh, the decision to stop pushing something to the production before fixing the error budget or uh, the, uh, the, uh, the error budget breach. However, it gives you the data points. In the classic, in the classic model, uh, it was always like an emotional thing, right? So operations right. team that, hey, I, I'm afraid that you will break the production system, I would end up right. on call. So there is no data behind it, right? right. So uh, like in, in our case, what we did or what my experience is that, that we talk about SLOs, reiterate about them, reiterate about error budget and so on. And okay, we do this, I, I would say this sentence, right? So don't pin me on that. Every engagement I we treat in SRE transformation, at least you should see every engagement as a sales engagement, every conversation as a uh, negotiation. Yeah. So, like then, like if you if you look at if you see that uh, the production is burning and there are a lot of complaints about customer, you have to remind the de decision stakeholders that remember I told you about SLO and that's that's how you have to use the information and the insights that you gather in a way that to get the buy-in and so on. So, but uh, I have seen in some of the uh, projects that we uh, do an SRE, the error budget was really uh, keeping keeping an eye on that. And most often we were never depleting the error budget. Or we were not, uh, that, that's also not a good sign. It's an anti-pattern, right? So, because it's an anti-pattern because the whole uh, concept of SLO or SRE is to give the room for an innovation Correct. So if, like an experimentation. Correct. So if you don't breach your SLOs quite often, you have to make sure you have to uh, strict the, uh, like you have to make make the SLO stronger enough that Correct. the system can broke and then you can keep on experimenting. So. Correct. So, so, so it's, it's great. So one of the things is a lot of times, um, I always believe that an SRE transformation requires a lot more people to be a part of the bandwagon. Now, as a coach, how important is it to mentor your team members to come through the journey? Because not everybody will be at your level to come through that. So have you, what, what have been your approach to uh, mentor your team members individually in the journey and any, any success stories on that? Uh, okay. So mentoring is something that is like, it's an individual thing, right? So you have to cater the needs of the person and everyone will have their own intrin uh, intrinsic motivations okay. so if like you have to see uh, the, you have to evaluate their intrinsic motivations and strengths and based on that so sre is a vast topic so for example what i do is like if someone is good at software engineering right so i'll look i'll, I'll try to nurture his uh, nurture him in the areas of automation or in the in the areas of uh, reliability feature development or improvement or in the area of deeper root cause analysis and also and so on and so on so like we uh, we've like and sometimes someone some guy is really good at infrastructure so like the, then playing it to his strength that uh, for giving him that scope of CACD pipelines or uh, improving the infrastructure or capacity management and so on and so on and so on. So like I usually do is like pay, playing it by strengths of an individual and uh, each in, for each individual have a different set of motivations and each each individual have a different set of aspirations and we have to play with that and uh, and and based on that we can uh, nurture them in the direct in the right direction to get the to get the benefit of it uh, i would like to add one point on that is like like sre role is that is not that one do every one does everything of sre uh, umbrella so it's like you have to have a team 
who is good at every aspect of it in a way that you can balance the strengths and weaknesses out of in a way that you can produce a greater results as a team yeah so it actually boils down again to the point of being building a cohort a tribe or squad or a pod uh, yes. overall as a team we are making it work and it's also about playing all your different roles uh, chiming in each other to the overall end to end uh, yeah. goal of success which which i think is absolutely <laughs> fine uh, a couple of last uh, two to three questions that i wanted to kind of focus on is um you have been um focusing on um a lot of changes but what are some of the challenges the common challenges that you will uh, face when you are actually doing a role of an sri coach and transformations i mean a lot of times people are very busy with their own work they want to do something additionally on top of it they are not built for it and you have to still steer them into a direction you don't have direct control of those people so what are some of the challenges that you see uh, particularly when you are as an sri coach sometimes i tell these coaches a very thankless job if everything works well they'll say they did it if something goes down blame it on praveen because he did not do a good job as an sri coach so how do you how do you see that whole challenges um, in the, in the time of being an sri coach that people have to be aware when they go and uh, step into this role yeah so uh, again like uh, like being an sri coach or a, is a transformation leader role right so as we sure. discussed so like if you are a leader who is resp- like and who is having a di- direct responsibility across the organization like a direct reportees or something like that you will have a different impact yeah. but as a leader who does not have a responsibility on the people but you want to transform certain thing it is even more challenging because one uh, people need to uh, believe in you correct two the people get along with you and three that they need they see the potential that they they need there is a need for change correct. right so uh, that that was the thing that you it it makes it even challenging uh, when you were mentioning about common challenges that i see every organization where i go uh, the common challenge is that the resistance to change hmm. and uh, the the lack of uh, uh, lack of uh, lack, lack of motivation to do something more as you said uh or to some to do something less uh or uh, fear uh, fear and uncertainty right any transformation or any movement offer a lot of uh, uncertainties and with uncertainty it's a it's a uh, playground for the uh, like uh, cultural issues in the team right so sure. so that's why you have to balance the sari transformation very carefully uh, as a coach so your job is to get people behind you so how you can get people behind you is that like uh, trying to uh, trying to seriously commit to the commit to solving their problems and having engaging in a, a series of conversations with every stakeholder of the organization trying to see their pains and trying to understand their problem and also try to gu- trying to guide them how sri can help them in the in the in the in the in the in, the, in solving their challenges so to paint the picture in a way that like uh, that sre can help them in a, and also it's a, it's a trust you have to gain uh, sure. over and it's a great grip that you have to gain over the overall on the organization so that can only be achieved if you are not overselling and if you are managing the expectations really well across the organization and if you really uh, and if you are if you know what you're talking that's important uh, and uh, and and the other thing is right to to be empathetic in and to fill in their in their shoes right and uh, and why understanding their uh, their challenge and and their why right and trying to paint the picture that why sri can answer their why or their why sri part and then uh, like uh, that that kind of a uh, that, those are the challenges and those are the mitigation steps that you that you can do and each organization have different um, organizational setups correct and responsibility setups right so in some of the companies product delivery is under one leader organizational leader and operations team is under one organizational leader it's even challenging because you need to uh, get the buy in of both the leaders and get them aligned on the topics and so on and so on so it's Excellent. really challenging excellent uh, so uh, last couple of questions first uh, this uh, we cannot uh, stop talking about major incidents so i, I always think that uh, an sri role on a major incident becomes even more important right i mean, I mean and i tell people that's the chief source of toil i see 100 people on a bridge call i don't know why you need to have 100 people on a bridge call to actually handle a major incident right mm-hmm. uh, now as part of an sri coach as a contributing to a decision making process what do you think would be your uh, area of advice 
when you're talking mm-hmm. about critical incidents or a problem that happens, how do you handle that with ease and how do you bring in that level of um, calmness as well as something which could make life a lot more easier on the on the production side? Uh, well, so like first, like uh, on the calming sense, like we need to understand, it's a, it's a more of a philosophical answer that, uh, that you need to understand what is the tiny little role that we are playing in the whole universe and that makes you calm down a little um however on the uh, uh the sre uh, aspect of uh, incidences like i would look at like i don't know how you look at it but from i would look at it uh, incident as an opportunity so right. the, the incident should happen uh, and incident should come and the system will should break then only we will learn right so you have to build a build a culture of learning and you have to build a culture of blameless postmortems in in your whole organization then people are in uh, people who are in who are in the incident calls are more feel more safer you see like the stress will only come because of the psychological safety and fear of uh, judgment and so on and so on so if you build the culture of uh, continuous improvement and the culture of blameless uh, thing everybody will be passionate enough and uh, and and play their role of uh, to the to the extent that is possible to uh, do a good uh, job in in the incident handling and so on so so excellent so my last final question is um what do you think uh, if someone is aspiring to be an sre coach um they they're not very sure they have they've been in the industry they've done they've done different roles because they over a period of time you have played every role like an architect you are uh, the uh, yeah. production support engineer and other stuff and then they eventually become those uh, sre coaches that everybody looks up uh, but <laughs> is it is, is it a role that you would advise people to aspire for and if so what would be their future as they as we go into the the next era so i'm combining both together as a as a as a thought so on the aspiration part it's an individual thing so if you are real it's really a daunting task as i mentioned in the beginning and it needs a lot of stakeholder management and communication and and expectation management and so on so if you are passionate so first thing first like to do to excel in any job you have to be passionate about the topic and right sure. uh, that that drives you uh, to to make a success i would say like uh, because of the study that you devops institute have done is like 62% of the organizations are thinking of transforming into sre and that that number will grow bigger bigger there is much more need for sre coaches in the in the market so for a career uh, i would st- i would see that it's a good opportunity uh, to develop yourself into that role because there will be a lot of opportunities uh, when it comes to uh, the what are the things or skills that are needed to be or empathetic uh, stakeholder uh, the com- catering the communication to the audience and the depth of understanding of sre and width of understanding and software development life cycle and ability to uh, fill in the shoes of someone else try to understand their pain and then try to uh, ability to uh, communicate and um, and as well as being patient as i said uh, it's really an important task and and um, keeping an eye on what are you selling because if the most often i see that a lot of coaches not only sri coaches any coach they oversell in the beginning over a period of time as you said that coach is not good enough let's get rid of them let's do our thing by ourselves so like uh, like use it as a sales engagement but promise only the thing that can be delivered in a way so that way like balance it out in a way that uh, that the sri transformation can go quite a lot excellent way. you know it's been a fascinating discussion today pravin i can we can see your passion the level of focus around uh making it uh valuable for your customers your client but the thing really that that stood out for me for the whole 30 plus minutes of conversation was um the ability for you to understand the why from everyone and i think that's a very important task people don't do it and also extreme patience uh and you said about passion because passion actually brings the best within yourself in whatever work that you are doing it you do the best right um uh, th- there's a quote that i studied that um, what is excellence is that even if you are a street sweeper sweep the floors that nobody else can match to what you are sweeping right because you are very passionate yeah. about doing certain things and no job is below dignity by the way yeah, of course But when you yeah. when you when you do something with that level of precision and focus it becomes magical right and and it is just by hearing to you uh if someone wants to be a part of the sri journey i think there is a whole lot of step but then um, rome is never built in a day you have to build yeah, your course. stacks uh, step by step to build that 
um, aspect, but uh, it's still worth uh, a, a long uh, uh, pursuit, but it's still worth it, right? So thank yeah. you so much uh, for sharing your insights. If anybody wants to reach out to you and, and get to a conversation about SRE, how can they find you, Praveen? Which are the sure. modes that we can reach you? Reach you well. Uh, I, I, people can connect with me in LinkedIn, and we can share the link in the uh, in the description of the video or something. And then, sure. yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to engage uh, if someone is interested, and if you if someone want to grab a coffee and discuss about SRE and so on and so on. Yeah, it's you you might have seen that's a, that's my topic of passion, and then um, I'm interested. So, Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Praveen, for your great uh, session today. Have you, as you, I hope you enjoyed thoroughly about the whole role of SRE coach and transformation. Uh, that is how passionate uh, site reliability engineering practitioners come there and share real world insights. We will look at seeing you all in the next episode. Until then, thank you everyone uh, for watching us. And thank you so much again, Praveen, for making this happen. Thanks a lot, Suresh, for giving me that opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.